Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is V. In this video, I'll be talking about why you should study biomedical sciences. More specifically, I'll be covering topics like how biomedical science is different to studying medicine, and also some of the subjects that you'll cover in university, the practical and transferable skills, and also some potential career options. For a bit of context, I study medical biosciences, which is essentially the same as biomedical sciences, at Imperial College London, and then I continued on to do a master's in genes, drugs, and stem cells, and I'm now a research assistant at the University of Cambridge focusing on genetics and stem cells. In one sentence, biomedical science is the study of the human body and diseases at a more molecular level. A question that I'm often asked quite a bit is how is biomedical sciences different to medicine and are biomedical scientists basically just medic rejects? Maybe, but let me just clarify that a little bit. Generally speaking, medicine is much more patient-centric and it actually gives you the qualifications to become a practicing doctor. But that's not the case with biomedical sciences because studying that would give you the background that a doctor would normally have and actually even in a bit more detail, but it doesn't give you the practical skills required to actually become a doctor. But don't worry, I'll be talking about some of the other potential career options that you have as a biomedical graduate. Another key difference is that medicine is a six-year undergraduate course in the UK, and biomedical sciences is a three-year undergraduate course. And in terms of what you study in both of these courses, biomedical science focuses more on the cellular pathways and also molecular interactions in the human body. We also look at a range of different human diseases, so we don't actually study specifically the symptoms of each of these diseases, but we look at it at a much more molecular level. So this could be a genetic mutation or an error in protein folding, or maybe there's a dysregulation in the immune response. So you can imagine that it's a lot of biology. And essentially, if we're able to identify what goes wrong in human diseases and what happens normally, we're able to develop therapeutics or drugs to help treat these different diseases. If you study biomedical sciences, you will have the opportunity to learn about a bunch of really interesting topics and that doesn't just cover biology, but it also covers a range of state-of-art technologies that we currently use to study and treat human diseases. Regardless of which university you go to, you will most likely cover topics like immunology, genetics, cancer biology, pharmacology, and also regenerative medicine. So I thought I'd just give a very brief overview of what each of these topics actually mean and some of the things that you can learn out of it. Immunology is basically anything to do with the immune system. So we learn about how different immune cells communicate with each other to fight against pathogens that invade our body, and also what happens when our immune system is unable to fight these pathogens. These include diseases like auto immune disease, which is genetic, sepsis, and even allergies. Moving on to genetics, genetics is essentially the foundation of everything in biology. You will learn about what makes up our human genome, epigenetics, which is environmental factors that may play a role in gene expression, different ways of genetic engineering, so things like CRISPR is very popular right now. You'll also learn about the different ways to deliver genetically modified DNA into our cells. One really interesting method is to use viruses like lentiviruses and also AAV. Cancer biology is also another topic that is super interesting. You will learn about the different hallmarks of cancer, which is what makes cancer so difficult to treat. For example, tumors have developed ways of hiding very deep inside areas with low oxygen that are not very easily found by our immune cells, and they are able to survive in these low oxygen environments because they themselves are able to generate new blood vessels so that they have this constant supply of nutrients and also oxygen to feed its growth, essentially. Next up is pharmacology, and this is everything to do with drug interactions and how we respond to these drugs. This was also one of my favorite modules in university because I had an amazing lecturer who just explained everything in such an interesting way. I remember learning about what makes certain drugs like heroin so addictive. In a way, the quicker that a drug can be cleared from the body, the quicker your euphoric effect disappears, which is what leaves the addict wanting more in very short spaces of time. And finally, we have regenerative medicine, which is such a growing field and I personally regret not taking this module in university. This topic essentially looks at stem cells, which as you probably know, are cells that can differentiate into any other cell type in our body. Nowadays, a lot of research focuses on reversing this process using iPSCs, which is induced pluripotent stem cells. And this opens doors for a lot of research focusing on diseases that are seemingly incurable.
Another huge component of biomedical sciences is lab work. Depending on which university you go to, the way that they do lab training may be slightly different, but in general you learn techniques like PCR, which is polymerase chain reaction, and you've probably heard of that from all of the COVID PCR testings that have been going around right now. You'll also learn to do Western blots, which is a method of measuring protein expression, immunofluorescence, which uses very specific antibodies to bind to your protein of interest, so you can essentially visualize on your plate where the proteins are located on the cell. You might also do a lot of bacteria work. Some of that includes mini prep or maxi prep, which are just two different methods of extracting plasmid DNA from bacteria. But as you know, bacteria replicates extremely, extremely quickly, quickly, which is why they're often used as this like sort of machinery to produce a ton of DNA that we are interested in. And this method is called cloning. And finally, we have tissue culture, which I think most labs would definitely do. And it's essentially growing your cells and maintaining cell lines in an aseptic environment so that you can use them for your experiments. Practical work can be really challenging, but also really exciting. It takes a lot of practice and resilience, but once you get there, it's an extremely valuable skill set to have, regardless of whether or not you decide to pursue biomedical research as a career. Usually it's not just lab work that you do, you're also in charge of planning your own experiments, analyzing your data and planning for future experiments based on the results that you got. If you have a hypothesis in mind, you need to plan out what it is that you want to do and also what are the most suitable experiments to give you the answers that you want. So a typical flow of experiments that may involve CRISPR-Cas9 may look a little something like, first of all, identifying a gene that you would like to knock out and then designing your gRNA sequence for that. Then you want to grow this up in bacteria and then extract it using mini prep or maybe expand it even further using maxi prep depending on how much DNA you're looking for. Then you'll be transfecting these into the cells. This can be any cell line depending on your research. So normally these are immortalized cancer cell lines. And after transfection, you need to keep these cells growing. So this is the tissue culture work that I've mentioned before. So making sure your cells are being fed with the right nutrients, so changing the media frequently enough. Finally, when you feel like your cells have grown enough and you'd like to perform experiments on them, you will essentially extract the DNA from these cells and then perform any experiment that you wish. So either a western blot can be a PCR, it just depends on what you are looking for and the hypothesis that you are trying to answer. Personally, I found lab work during my first two years of university extremely stressful and also really tiring. I remember I'd come back at the end of a lab day and like literally feel like my brain is completely fried. But for whatever strange reason, in my final year, I was given the option to either take on a lab-based project, a dry lab project, or essentially something in industry that isn't really related to labs at all. But I just decided to give labs one last chance and decided to embark on a lab-based project. And I'm really glad that I chose my six month lab placement project because essentially by then I already had a decent foundation of the lab skills that I needed and I was competent enough to so call like carry my experiments out by myself. And that gave me a lot of autonomy and also flexibility, which are two things that I actually really, really enjoy about research. Apart from technical skills, you also develop a range of transferable skills, whether or not you decide to do research down the line. One of the top skills you will learn with any STEM subject really is resilience. And most of the time, research is also trying to figure out essentially what went wrong. And that also involves a lot of critical thinking and problem solving. When planning and also doing your lab work, you will grow to develop amazing organizational and also time management skills. And I say this because some experiments can literally take hours, but actually three hours is literally just waiting for something to incubate or maybe waiting for a machine to run. So you just need to make use of your time if you have multiple experiments that you need to do during the week, you can sort of plan ahead uh, if there's this three hour block that I'm literally doing nothing and sort of have a head start on the next experiment. But you also want to plan that you have enough time for the experiment. Otherwise, you might be in there till like eight or something like that. And that's not ideal. And on the note of planning slash organization, once you go through labs, you will have more and more data, right? And you'll also be using a lot more different protocols. And so keeping track of these protocols and keeping them in a very 
organized manner, whether it's on your laptop, in your physical lab notebook. So staying organized on that front is also something really important. So if you do decide that research is not something that you want to do, there are also many other jobs that will highly value the skill set that you develop as a biomedical science student. And finally, we have potential career options, which is something that I really didn't know of when I went into university. I'd say that the most common career route for a biomedical science graduate is to usually pursue a career in research. So someone can either choose to do a master's first or continue on to do a PhD or do both. Or if you're someone like me who prefers a little bit more work experience before deciding on a PhD, you could become a research assistant first and then you can climb up the ranks a little bit and become a research associate. And if a PI is something that you want to achieve down the line, that is possible as well. When you are in research, you'd normally be in either academia or industry. Very generally speaking, academia means working in a university. Working in industry means working in larger like biopharmaceutical companies like AstraZeneca for example. There are pros and cons to either working in academia or in industry but if you'd like a more detailed video on that please let me know in the comments section below. Although research is so-called the most common career path, there are many other options available that I've also heard from my friends and also some of my seniors. And one of the most common ones is consultancy in either healthcare sciences or biopharmaceuticals or drug development. Sometimes you don't even need to do consultancy in anything science related if that's not what you're interested in. I've also had friends who just transitioned into one of the big four companies as well. So that's definitely an option. If you don't actually like doing lab work on the bench, some people prefer like managing clinical trials or some people prefer doing animal work. And by animal work, I mean usually like either culling the mice or um, micro injections into embryos or blastocysts, anesthesia, or basically performing any sort of experiment that has to do with animals. Something that's also definitely an option is a patent attorney. It doesn't need to be in science, but if you do already have a science background, it's definitely beneficial to use that down the line. You will still need to do a bit of training and take exams for this, but the end salary is I've also had friends who have gone on to become teachers and then there are some who just completely want absolutely nothing to do with science anymore so they've gone into either banking, business management or accounting. That's it for this video. I hope it gave you a better idea of what studying biomedical sciences is like. But of course, with every subject, there are pros and cons. So I'll most likely be doing another video on the flip side to studying biomedical sciences. So stay tuned for that if you are interested and hit the notification button. Anyways, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I really do try my best to respond to all of them. And if you enjoy STEM videos like these, please hit like and subscribe as it would really help me out. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!